hello, my name is Brent Miller and I'm a descendant of the traditional custodians of this language group, Gubby Gubby Kabi Kabi. Um, I believe, you know, with Murdering Creek, I reckon a plaque or placard should be uh, erected there. We've had some in the, in the past, some have been taken away, others were just pretty small, um, a short description of, of what happened here, but with the Sunshine Coast and within this country, within this language group, I believe our history, good or bad, should always be remembered. Use these ones as, as our life lessons. And this is why I believe uh, a, a plaque should be erected around here, having a description of what did happen around those areas. So if you can, uh, please help and donate uh, and uh, hopefully get this placard up and running. Thank you very much. And nobody's left to speak about the ballad of Old Mervyn Creek. We today wish to remember the warriors who died defending their traditional lands, the settlers who waged war against them, and the women and children and elderly people who uh, are the casualties of the conflict. One of the local troubled places is near a massacre site called Murdering Creek. Uh, I've got um, family living in that area at Doonan and they, they and other locals have told me many stories of properties being troubled, places being haunted, great misfortune befalling people, which is attributed by them to the ongoing effects of the, um, of the massacre. Beulah has bought a piece of degraded land in Doonan with the intention of um, taking part in the healing of that troubled place. So we, we do land care and we research the history and tell the stories and meet with the local people and pray for the healing of the land. But this is the murdering creek. Wow, that is clear in there, eh? Oh, look how beautiful it is over here. Holy mackerel. Murdering Creek explains it. It's there, it's written, you know, black and white. A lot of people that I work with in the community, I talk about Murdering Creek and then they go, well, I live near Murdering Creek and I've always wondered why they call it Murdering Creek. And um, they don't realise that the history stems back to the settlers uh, uh, planning an actual massacre in the 1860s. So, very significant um, if you know that story. And to be able to walk up here and to, you know, fully experience the place is a privilege, really. You know, and uh, that's where the healing sort of process begins is when people sort of talk about it and people, you know, acknowledge the fact that this happened. You can imagine the Aboriginal people that, you know, were, were slaughtered in that massacre and how they're still crying out for justice. You know, that's where there's a lot of reports of hauntings around this area. People being haunted by Aboriginal spirits. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that uh, hasn't been resolved. Yeah, you know, you can sort of understand, um, you know, why our people were treated that bad because they just saw us as a, as a problem more so than a solution to a lot of things. One, one sort of bad event that may have taken place here does sort of, you know, a lot of sort of scars the place. But it, that's all it really is. It's just a, it is a scar. It's a scar. It's a mark that was left on this landscape. But, you know, 
we know that scars heal, you know, and um, by doing a lot of this stuff, it actually, as I said, it, it is it's a healing process. There's people in our community that, um, yeah, as I said, turn a blind eye to it. But then, you know, there's other people that, uh, like everybody that's here today, that wants to um, bring this story and make more people aware of this story. Like, I, I read the letter from yeah. um, an old white farmer that lived here. Yeah. And um, and this is where they set the, the, the trap. The trap here, to, somewhere here. To catch these. Um, yeah, to bring them out or something, to eh? To bring them out. And um, from what I gather, they set a decoy. He walked out in the water a bit so the um, local Murrays could Spotted see him. him. And, um, and then he... They were hiding in the bush with their guns. Yeah. And the Murrays came over to to see what the ruckus to see was all what about. The was about. So the decoy, he just walks off into the bush, and when the Murrays come over, they just jumped out and just yeah, shot, shot them. them. Just yes. shot on the spot. Them on the spot. Yes. In cold blood. Yes. It was a plan, strategy, planned a strategy. strategy. Yeah. Of genocide to mm. the Aboriginal people. Yeah. You know, and, and, you, and it very nearly worked. Yeah. It yeah. very nearly worked. Yeah, that's why I'm sort of very, you know, I'm very proud to you know, be you know, here, you know. I'll, I'll, <laughs> we come back in probably to heal, um, heal the land and that. We've been back here, we've done a lot of um, weed control and that through our work and that, so it's all a part of um, bringing, bringing it back to, you know. Just, you know, doing the work, getting rid of the obnoxious weeds and stuff like that, but also just sitting down in there sitting and listening to because you can feel it you know you can feel the stuff in your heart there you've got that connection to the land and that yeah well cuz he's in here working daily basis and being that you know the next custodian next generation of custodians just continuing that work we did a lot of that filming for the murdering creek production and it was interesting though, we knew we were protected because there was a Jabiru out here and it was all, we had some fellas from Northern Territory and they were walking along the track here like that and then we look out and we see that Jabiru standing there and then the boys looked at each other, turned around one looked at each other and they started smiling. I said, what are you smiling about? And they go, oh there, look, grandfather out there looking see. over us. So we thought, ah, oh, that's a good sign. You back, fall back like you got shot, man, you know, like, you can feel it, man, you know. But the way we come in and recreate it and put ourselves in that place, that was the way of healing it and getting that story. Then we, then we showed that story to all the schools then, you know. So it was hard back in 2005 doing it, I must admit. But now I come here, years later, I, I'm, I sort of, you know, I've gotten past that impact. Yeah. This, this place has been on my mind really for some years and I haven't been here before and it's just great to be here with you guys and it's terrific that you're doing, you're attending to the healing of the land, doing the, doing the land care and telling the stories and the white fellas role in that is to say the sorries. <laughs> I wish to say sorry on behalf of my people for what happened here because that's my role. You're the custodians you look after, but the white fellow sorries is part of the process, which I would wish to say on this occasion as best I can. You know, you're one person that's, I said sorry there, and we thank you for that, eh? Yeah, because, yeah, no, we yeah, really appreciate you saying that, eh? You? Oh, no problem. And being here and, uh, you know, great. experiencing yeah, yeah. the place. And, yeah. does the, the opportunity to say the necessary stories is important for the land and for reconciliation and to be about the same agenda although we come from very different places because we all want for the past to be healed in various ways and everybody's got a different contribution to make to that and I'm very pleased to be able to play my small part and 
and um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of bad things happen here, but I love coming here. You know, you think about the place being a, a that, but you know, the healing way is coming here and not thinking of it as a bad, thinking of it as a place where we can hunt mullet still, where we can find mud crabs, where we can see these mangroves in here that have got scars of where our families extracted the tree, off the tree, a part of the tree, and the scar's still there today. You know, that tree's over 300 years old. A lot of the mangroves are. And so, you know, the best way to heal it is to come here and, and think of the place. Not a lot of information to be found A letter or two in archival grounds People still hear gunshots And terrible sounds Well we're on the um, eastern side uh, of Lake Wyber, just south of Noosa and um, this is the setting for the Murdering Creek Massacre we're just north of the boundary of, of the northern boundary of the Yandina Station. And it's the manager of Yandina Station, William Chippendall, who's mentioned in a letter as being the organiser of the Murdering Creek Massacre. Murdering Creek's on the other side of the lake, just uh, sort of beyond the edge of this tree. And we only have one account of the Murdering Creek Massacre. Uh, it's written in a letter from uh, um, William Lowe to David Bull, who was writing some stories about the history of Tawantan and this area. And uh, we have no accounts from the time when it happened. Uh, a little bit of oral history, but this written account at the end of 1944 is the only um, description of the massacre. But I can read you a little bit of the letter, if you like. Mr Chippendall was the manager of the Andina station, and the blacks were very troublesome, killing his cattle. In fact, Chippendall's life was never safe. He never went on the run without a revolver with him. So Chippendall organised a party of eight of his hands, the party went down to the reserve at the mouth of the creek, that's over there, and one of the party came walking down the sand on the edge of the lake, dressed as a traveller, while the others were planted in the bushes. The blacks were camped on the other side of the lake at Hilton. That's over just behind me, that hillside behind me. As soon as they saw the man going down the lake, the blacks up with spears and waddies and across they came in their canoes, which were made out of a sheet of bark tied at each end with vines. And when they got about 50 yards from the mouth of the creek, out stepped the other seven men and fired on the blacks. As far as I could hear, very few of the blacks got away. They tumbled out into the water. So that is how the name came, Murdering Creek. But in our research, we have come across a, a note in the Gympie Times from the 5th of May, 1869, and it's describing a little bit of the circumstances in 1869. The blacks have lately been spearing cattle in the most wanton manner on the Yandina run, and unless checked at once, will be emboldened by impunity and commit more serious crimes. It would not be creditable to the executive were such a state of things allowed to continue in the main road between Brisbane and Gympie. This Gympie Times notice does appear to be a kind of notice, a kind of notice that there's a problem and that it might be solved in the unspoken conventions of the time.
What Chippendale and his eight had men Swore darling bird never roam again For all the stories Basically the Murder in Creek painting has been a long inspiration. I first painted a painting of Murder in Creek at about 15 years of age and I painted the massacre of how I seen it through my eyes and I got inspired to paint the whole story as best as I could matched up with the historical documents that were found. So this is the Murder in Creek painting and um, this is the story about the pastoral lease and how uh, cattle were brought in from the west. So here's a scene of a local follower seeing a cow and ready to spear it because it's going to make a good feed. So then there's the hit here being organised by Chippendale's eight men at Yandina Creek Station. That's where the pastoral leash was on the property. Um, next we go here to Lake Wyber itself. That's a story of one man going out as a decoy and then all the mob came to seeing him to see what was going on because they were you know fascinated why this guy was going like this in the lake and it's sort of if you go to Lake Wyber today you can walk out to about that deep in parts of it so then we have here an open shooting and massacre um, hence the name Murder in Creek and then we go here to the overall commercialization and population of Noosa, so um, being sold as a tropical fruit destination first, you know, pineapples, uh, coconut trees which wash up under the beach, high-rise buildings, surfers. Then we go here to a healing process and a dream of reconciliation between Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people coming together and, and sharing. So yeah, that's the story of the painting. A few good people want to speak about the ballad of old Murdering Creek. My name is Meredith Walker and I live at Budrum on the Sunshine Coast. I have a lifelong interest in the connection between people and places. What places mean to them, what things that they remember all around Australia, there were memorials to events that happened and to people who were involved. The most notable and well-known, of course, are the memorials to the First and Second World Wars. And there are memorials also to explorers and early settlers. But there is very little about the impact of that settlement on the traditional owners. But there are a few places where communities have joined together to recognise the events that impacted on the traditional owners. There are memorials about massacres at Bingra, that's the Mile Creek Massacre, at Tenterfield, at East Ballina, at Coniston, and at Cloncurry. Here on the Sunshine Coast, we know very little about that early history, that history of dispossession, although recent historical research is providing us with more information. But the naming of a creek at Lake Wyber, Murdering Creek, and the naming of the road that leads to the creek, Murdering Creek Road, has kept a little bit of that dispossession history in the public consciousness. People often ask, why Murdering Creek? How did it get its name? And there are regularly um, accounts and articles in newspapers and magazines. But it's time for more truth-telling, for recognising that Murdering Creek in the landscape through interpretive signs. It's time for truth telling here on the Sunshine Coast. And as you take a quiet walk in the sand, we ask the Creator Sun to come heal the land. 
first people. Toss them aside, put up a church and a steeple. How quickly we forget, how quickly the world moves on. Yet this murder in your creek is unique. For it's a massacre that you could cannot conceal. So we reveal. We live in a time where we must start to admit. No longer omit. This is the thing. This is the sin on top of the sin. Because we cannot look it in the eyes. Because all history often does is tell lies. How exactly did this happen in Yandina Station? A slaughter, a plan to kill the oldest male. See, that was the way they set sail. Poison the flower. Guns and horses make them cower. But now's the time to rebuild, to heal the land, to realize we're part of an infinite strand. But in order to forgive, we have to live without looking away from the pain that reigns on society today. All around the world, it's the same story, chasing gold and personal glory. Yet they were just tossed aside and history abides to too often hide. The first people's pain. Now we come together to look this straight in the eye. There is no reason for us to lie. And together we can heal and cry. So I beg for forgiveness. Even if it wasn't me, the ancestors that came before, I implore to take this moment so we can just hold and behold a whole new way as hopefully you and I can admit what happened and we can move together today. That's all I got to say. Much love and may there be much healing and forgiveness and admitting of what happened at Murdering Creek, what's happened to first people all around the world. God bless. Bring them families back, they will live and they will speak about the healing of old Murdering Creek. Inside the Wallum hides a great lake Where the Wyber and Perigian escape For the people Fresh willing taste great But the question asks where are they now? All them families were chased out of town And nobody's left to speak About the ballad of Old Mervyn Creek Not a lot of information to be found A letter or two in archival grounds People still hear gunshots and terrible sounds Or something about a pastoral release A build upon colonial greed A few good people wanna speak About the ballad of old modern creed what Chippendale and his eight hired men Swore darling bird never roam again For all the stolen cattle They take their revenge Musket spears, what is around? Oh, darling bird about his late slain on the ground all that was left was to weep About the ballad of old murder and creep And as you take a quiet walk in the sand We ask the Creator Son to come heal the land Too much injustice is hard to understand 
Inside the wall um, hides a great lake Where the wiber and Perigian escape Bring them families back, they will live And they will speak About the healing of old murder and creep About the healing of old murder and creep About the healing of old murder and creep